Hello, my name is Femini Christian Derrick. This class is brought to you by Isaac Humanitarian Foundation. Now, on today's class, I'll be taking you guys germination in plants. The topic in biology name as what well, germination in plants. Now, what do we what do we mean by germination? Germination is a process whereby an embryonic seed is grown into a mature young plant. An embryonic seed is grown into a what? A mature young plant. Now, there are two types of germination. The first one is known as what? The epig, the epig, epig germination. And the second one is called the what? The hypogeal germination. Now, let's take a look at this two diagram. Germination that occurs in cowpew and germination that occurs in me. Now, before I explain the PG and the hypogeal germination, let's take a look at this diagram. Look at it now. Epigy germination occurs in cowpea. So this one exhibits epigy germination. While this exhibits hypogy germination. So now, what do we understand by Epigy germination. Now, epigy germination is a type of germination whereby the cotyledon, this is it, the cotyledon, that means the fruit, one or two cotyledon, is outside, is grown at the outside the surface of the soil. Do you understand? This is the soil. The cotyledon is grown outside the surface of the, 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 the soil. Do you understand now? A very good example of this. Epigic germination is our example of this word, the cowpea, the millet, and think the cowpea, the millet, the granules, and so many, and so on, and so on. So we have various examples of what epigeal germination. Now let's go to hypogeal germination. Now, what do we understand by what hypogeal germination? Now, hypogeal germination is a type of germination whereby the cotyledon is not grown above the soil. This is the soil. The cotyledon is beneath what? The soil. The cotyledon is beneath the soil. It may have the epicot epicotai and the epicotai either in the soil or above the soil, but the cotyledon is the main focus. It is what? Beneath what? The soil. Now, Hypogeal germination occurs in most the plantation of what maize, z maize. But the technical name is what z maize of this. The plantation of maize. Hypogeal germination occurs here. It has a fibrous root maize, and most times, hypogeal germination occurs most times in what everything under what dicot. Why this occurs under what monocots? So all monocots exhibit hypogeal germination, and all dicots exhibit epigeal germination. Do you understand now? Now, okay. Now, under the structure of the seed, the seed is defined as what the mature, fertilized, and well-developed ovary of a plant. The mature, fertilized, and well-developed ovary of a plant. Now. There are some parts found in the what? In the seed. Like parts in the seed. Now, let's move to the structure of the seed. It so has a few spherical, the testa, and the span, which is this layer that is well drawn. Now, you have the cotyledon or the seed leaf. You have the radical and you have the plume. Other parts serve as protective covering, including the, they have the Internal part known as tagmen and the external part known as the testa. Now, part of this, the first one we will discuss is what? The difference between the testa and tagmen. On that one part known as what? The seed coat. The seed coat. The 
seed coat. What is the function of the seed coat? The seed coat, the seed coat, coat helps to protect the internal embryonic structure of the seed. It helps to, to protect the internal embryonic structure of what? The seed. That's the function of the seed coat. Now this seed coat can be divided into two. Can be divided into the tester. And can be also divide it into the what? The third man. Tegment. The tegment and what? The tester. The tegment and what? The tester. Now, the tester is known as the outer part of the gist of the seed coat. While the tegment is known as what? The inner part of what? The seed coat. Okay, the next part is about the helium. Now, the helium, the helium, the function of the helium in the seed. Now, helium serves as, as the seed scar. Why is it not called the seed scar? The seed scar. Because it serves as an attachment of the seed funicule to the seed stop. So the attachment of the seed funicle or the peri or the pericarp, that external pericarp, known as the funicle to so the seed stop is the function of what the helium. Then the next one is known as what? The micropy. Now the micropy is a hole. The micropy is a hole. A hole that gives direct nutrients. Direct nutrients air and water air and water to the what to the embryo so this one in the in the seed serve as same function that you can derive from the what from the umbilical cord the umbilical cord uh, gives the baby the embryo the zygote food yeah that's just not food to the, to the zygote the same thing this one functions the same way the uh, the umbilical cord Functions, you understand? It's a O that transfer nutrient, air, and water to so the embryo. The next one, which is the fourth, is known as what? The embryo, yes. The seed has an embryo. Now, the embryo consists of two major parts and some other parts. The two major parts of the embryo is one, the embryonic, the embryonic shoots known as what? The plume. Then two, the embryonic root, known as what? The radical. So the embryonic root is called what? The radical. The embryonic root is called the what? The radical. Look at the diagram very well. Oh, that this one is the shoot, and this one is what? The root. Now, the shoot and the root are the two major parts. The other part contains the cotyledons, one or two or more cotyledons, known as what? Seed leaves. Now, look at it very well. The plume, the plume, the, known as what? The environment shoot, is protected by what? The clo, the clopi. The clopi. The clopi protects the what? The plume. Why the chlorizer protects what? The radical. So the radical, which is the uh, embryonic root, is protected by the what? The chlorizer. Do you understand? The next thing we are going to do, the next topic we are going to look is in two forms. The first one is the what? The, the condition necessary for growing seed. Condition necessary to grow what? Seed. Now, and then we we'll also check the what? The types of seed. Now, before we check that, let's check the type of seed first. The types of seeds. Now, there are two types of seeds. The first one is the monocot, monocotyledon, monocotyledon, or known as what? Monocot. Then the second one is the what? The dipot, the dipotyledon, known as what? The dipot. So the short form of the monocotyledon is what monocot. Short form of the monocotyledon is what is dipot. Now, what is the function of this two things? Now, 
the, what is the, the meaning of this gluten? Now, on the seed, in the seed, the monocot has only one seed leaf, known as what? Cotyledon. This one has only what? One seed leaf, known as what? One seed leaf, known as what? Cotyledon. While this has more than one seed leaf. More than one seed leaf. Or cotyledon. So that's more than one seed leaf or cotyledon. So one major difference between these two is that the monocots are fibrous in the roots. While the dicots are tough in the roots. So they have this one has the fibrous root and this one has the what entire root. Now we are going straight towards conditions, con conditions necessary to, for seed germination. Now, under conditions necessary for seed germination, conditions necessary for seed germination. Now, under conditions for seed damnation, we have the first one is what? A viable seed. A viable seed is needed for adequate growth of food within a specified time. A very productive seed will give you a fast food, while a bad seed will delay what? The acquisition of that crop. Now, the next one. The next one is adequate supply of oxygen. Adequate supply of oxygen. Oxygen is needed for good. Oxygen is needed for good and respiration. Plants use them for growth and what? For breathing. So respiration occurs in a plant in two organs. They're known as the stomata and the lentil cell. The next one is adequate temperature or optimum temperature so I'll make your adequate so adequate temperature the plant needs adequate temperature to grow like they will say in photosynthesis light is being captured solar energy is being captured by the chloropass do you understand stored in the chloropene they don't have to produce sugar produce glucose produce ATPs within the body for the plant to work to function and that part is called that phenomenon is called autotropism. I think then the last part is very humid environment. A humid environment is very very useful in Seed germination. Germination occurs with environments with large amount of ventilation. I mean, an environment must have what air. Air is a good factor that supports what germination in feed. Okay, the next time. Bye.